what is it saying now? All right, we in there. Bless God. <sighs> Good morning, people. Good morning. Give us a second while we're getting, getting our life together. All right. Welcome to Makeover Ministry. Whew. I'm so excited we have you. Thank you. Thank you. I actually bought it a long like. time ago, and it just came on in the room with the outfit today. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Put together. Uh, we got to do it every now and again. So we are live today with Miss Brea. And Brea, we are excited to have you this morning. Excited to be here. And thank you for letting us sit in on your makeover session this morning where we specialize in makeovers for the soul where caterpillars become butterflies, all those good things. So Brea, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm from a small town. Okay. And I have a little son okay. named Trey. Okay. Um, I don't know. How I old am, are you? Uh, I'm 29. Okay. I um I work. I have a nine to five. I always have a nine to five, but I've been to a couple different ones. Okay. <laughs> Ain't really found my niche at what I want to do yet. Okay. So um, I'm very creative. I know okay. that much. Okay. Um, and I've just you know put my time into different places at different times. Okay. So what what do you what's your goal for life? Like what? What legacy do you want to leave behind? My goal for life is to leave something behind for my son. Okay. Or, okay. you know, maybe have another kid and leave mm -hmm. something behind for them. Make sure I'm wealthy enough for them to be, to start off or, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to be placed right. You yep. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that really matters because a lot of us didn't have that. Yeah. And absolutely. so when you didn't have that, then you had to struggle you know what I'm saying, to get just the basics where whenever you kind of start out, you leave home, you leave with yeah. some things rooted and grounded, it kind of gets you off on a better start. So I definitely see that as a good goal. Um, Career-wise, what you, what's your goal? Um, I'm just creative. So I okay. know something, like, is going to come okay. creatively. Okay. Um, something maybe a story, a movie, um, so a writer. I like I like to write, okay. actually. So, okay. you know, um, things that I've been to, been through or seen, mm -hmm. um, it made me, you know, maybe I should write that down. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. yeah. that's pretty interesting. That's an interesting part of life that I've seen or experienced mm -hmm. or somebody else in my life has experienced, you know. Maybe I missed my calling. Maybe I was supposed to be like a... <laughs> Uh, um, a therapist you know, I, I, li I like to listen you yeah. know and it you know I like to create the picture or see the picture mm -hmm. and see I think that a lot of things that we have been through in life we looked at it wrong when it actually was something that God is going to use for you to help other people so you know when we can see our tests and our trials differently we can process the ones ahead of us differently Right. You know, if you can look back and be like, when you was in those, you know, being a single mother, me raising my kids, being a single mother, it was the hardest thing ever, I thought, you know, when they was little and all those things. But now, I got some years in. My kids are 16 and 17. And I can look and be like, even though I thought that was hard, I made it through it. And I think if we start to calibrate our mind like that, okay, when a problem arises in front of me, if you can go back and say, you know, even though yesterday was hard and that issue or, or two years ago or whatever... I made it through that, so even though this is hard right now, I'm going to make it through. You know, I think we have to start to build tenacity um, and strength of character mm -hmm. through our circumstances and the things that we've been through. And then you're able to tell somebody else. Uh, I call it, you get to be the blueprint. Right. You get to be the blueprint for somebody else. So I believe everybody has at least one book in them. How do I know? Because you got a story. Exactly. You made it through. You know, exactly. whatever you made it through, um, you're still standing and you're still a survivor. So today we're going to talk about anxiety. So we're going to talk about it a little bit today. Yeah. So we're going to talk about anxiety. Um, what? Because I could run up a wall sometimes. Okay. I used well, listen. I used I to mean, have anxiety attacks so bad. Oh Jesus! It was bad. The weirdest thing is literally the the texture on the ceiling. If yeah. I would lay in bed and see the texture on the ceiling, it would send me into an anxiety attack. Mm -hmm. I don't know. 
I think a lot of times we've been overstimulated in life. Mm -hmm. We've experienced a lot of trauma. Mm -hmm. We didn't put ourselves in a lot of trauma. <laughs> we've seen a lot. And so our mind can really be stretched out of place sometimes. Mm -hmm. So when anxiety comes, one of the first things that really helped me was stop and take a snapshot of my situation. Okay. The kids are okay. I'm in one piece. I'm alive. I'm going to make it through this situation. You have to learn how to talk yourself through. Yeah, because it's like with me, it's zero to 100. Yeah, yeah. Really quick. Yeah. So you, know you have to get in, get in front of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's it literally works. Um, I remember my friend did this with me once. We had actually went to the emergency room, and they had put me in a whole padded room because they was like, they said, you ain't crazy. Um, we just don't have no other rooms right now. All right, bless God. But I go in and I was still just like really just freaking out. And she she sat down with me and she literally, she began to walk down my life. She was like, your bills are paid, kids are in one piece, your mama's good. Like sometimes you have to walk yourself out. I call it playing tennis with your thoughts. Nope, I'm not going, I can't because that's too much for me right now. Mm -hmm. Nope, I'm not going to think about that. The Bible says cast down every high imagination. So, another thing that I've learned is when you get a lesson, you're going to be tested on it. So, since we're talking about anxiety today, this next week you're going to have situations that come up that you got to be able to use these strategies that we putting in place today. You know, literally thinking it through. Thinking it through because, let's go back, give me, give me one situation, you don't have to tell me it out loud, but just think about the last situation that really you were anxious about. Mm -hmm. Didn't you survive it? Absolutely. Okay. So when you think think it through like that, okay. Let me see what is what am I really worked up about? What's the worst that can happen? You know, for me, a lot of times anxiety came a lot raising my kids as a single mother. Mm -hmm. You know, because you got bills, you gotta make sure they good, you got the school calling, you got your own stuff, you got work, you got all these things. And so it starts who building that tension inside of us. Right. You know, but when I had to take a deep breath and step back and I, I, I can be where I am today and look at where I was in those times raising my kids when when they were young and anxiety was just it would shut me down. Yeah, it was well, so bad. What would you tell her? I would I would definitely I would definitely say it's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the things that I used to really get, oh, my God, anxious about when I look back at it now, it wasn't that big. Yeah. You know. Um, my son would get in trouble in school. He got put out of five daycares. He kept getting in trouble every school year. Like I kept getting call after call and it would really, that would be like, Oh my God. But he's 17. He lived, you know, he lived. And so a lot of things that that's we put one, a lot that's of, one of the things. Okay. 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 That's one. That could be one of the things. You okay. Know? Okay. He's just acting different. Yeah. And that yeah. is killing me. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. sending me up a wall mm -hmm. to where I'm mm -hmm. like, every time he does something that, but I, I like I don't need to like like don't do that. Like, mm -hmm. but I do. I'm like, stop talking mm -hmm. like that, or mm -hmm. you know, or like, why am I so upset that he's he's doing this? He's trying you know to find his way. Yeah. You know, and and I think even in that is 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 hard because we're trying to process because you got a son. Right. So I think we have to think about their thoughts, and a lot of times as a mother. Being who I am today and being who I was then, that's two different people. And I see it different, especially helping people. I don't believe that it's no such thing as a bad person. I don't believe it's no such thing as a bad child. It's a broken person mm -hmm. that no one sat down and took the time and said, let me help you unravel. So any child that comes from a house that's not in the house with their mother and their father, it's automatic broken heart. Yeah. That's first of all. Then if you got parents that argue, that's that's broken heart. Yeah. Then if you got a busy mother, because what else is she going to be? That's broken heartedness. So it's so much brokenness, and they're learning to process right. their feelings. Um, one thing that broke my heart, ooh, it broke my heart as a mama, as a mother when I came to this realization. My children have been through everything I've been through. Every relationship. Every argument that they heard, every good day, every bad day. But us as grown-ups, we have used vices. So we smoke, we drink, we lay up, we whatever we do to yeah. ease our mind. But they go through it sober. Yeah, Whew. absolutely. 
They go through it sober. So they're trying to, pro just, if you process your all the things that you have to experience with no vices, you would be doing more than that too. You know, so it's it's taking a moment and being like, dang, you don't know what moment is hit their mind. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know, like, think of yourself as a child. Uh, like, yeah. you know, moments that you might have missed your daddy or thought about something and you just, right, you it, it just randomly hit you. And then your mama like, why are you acting up? And it wasn't that you was trying to be rude to your mama. You know, right. it wasn't that you were trying to be rude to nobody. It's just something hit your heart. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it is. I don't know. He's acting different. Yeah. You know, that is worrying me. And I'm not saying acting different, like, is bad. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. He's mm -hmm. just growing. Mm -hmm. Which is just like the little things he said this morning. I'm just like, <laughs> you know stuff about stuff like that. Or, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. he told me the other day, that's why you ain't got no boyfriend. Or stuff. I was like, oh. Well, that was rude. <laughs> like, well, yeah, you know, like and that actually hurt my feelings. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I didn't know how to express that to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think it gives us a time to bond because a lot of times yeah. we really think we think the kids are kids, but these kids nowadays because they they're not because of the society we live in. They exposed to everything. Do you know how many thoughts? Now that I think about that, he said, "See, that's what I'll be saying about my anxiety." Like mm -hmm. now that. That's gonna worry me. Like, okay, don't no, let no, let's know, calibrate. Okay, let's calibrate. That's gonna worry me. Like the stuff we talked about this morning, I'm gonna mm -hmm. be like, well, you know, well, this is this is this, this is, is what you gotta process it through. This is why you sit down and you have those conversations. Mm -hmm. yeah. When those things come up, and and listen, I promise you, I remember looking back when I told my mom I was gay. Her response was, um, she she put me out of her life, and um, she uh disowned me honey she put all my kids stuff outside of her house like everything and i was like mama would you rather me be with one woman or 50 men and she said 50 men and i'm like oh my god that's just the most dumb thing to say but as i'm a mother now <laughs> and my daughter has come to me with things mm -hmm. you don't know what to say sometimes yeah you don't know i mean look, you it catch you off guard like what just happened to yeah. oh jesus i mean i Ooh. don't think you know i don't know i'm never gonna put like a label unless he wants to do something like that mm -hmm. you know i'm with my child whenever mm -hmm. for whatever i don't care mm -hmm. and maybe that might be wrong no that's you right know? that's right i don't know like i would never put him out for mm -hmm. nothing like mm -hmm. that but it's just, I just be, it's just something that is going to be on my mind, you know? Well, so like, this is, okay, so I, I said carry a lot like, of extra stuff for no reason. Like and that's why, and that's, that's, that is one of the things that causes us anxiety. But the first thing that you have to learn to do in those, because, you, because God's hand is on you, you're a child of God, so you got to use your lifeline. Mm -hmm. When those things come up, whew, Lord, give me the words. Give me the wisdom. This is my child that you gave me. I don't believe that no child that we birth is on accident. I don't care if you got raped. Mm -hmm. I believe that God is the only one that gives life. So if he gives life, it has a purpose. So in that time, you have to say, God, give me the words. Give me the wisdom because it's something in you that's going to calm him. And steady him. And a lot of times we're quiet because we don't know what to say. And it's okay to be like, you know what, babe? I'm going to get back to you. But don't forget to get back to them because they're waiting for your voice. I was telling my sister this the other day. A lot of times as parents, you know, we take our frustrations out on our kids. We don't mean to. We don't mean to. We never mean to. But life happens. You got this one on, that one on, this one on. Sit down. Yeah. You know, you yell at them. Um, but think about your own self. You don't want to about you. you when somebody at your job pop, honey, I know they didn't talk to me like yes, that. Yes, exactly. But it's the same way. They had something on their mind. They took it out on you. It's the same way with our children. So we have to use every opportunity as a way to teach them how to deal with people in the way we deal with them. So if we yell at them, it happens sometimes. But then you go back and be like, you know what? I didn't mean to yell, but I did. I didn't mean to say it how I said it, but I meant what I said. Yeah. You know. So, but that gives you an opportunity. Each situation gives you an opportunity to sit down and build a bridge, right. make plain understanding of what you're trying to say. Then that way, if you say what you, I call it emptying out. I'm gonna say everything I need to say. Let them say everything they need to say. I'm gonna come back and say what I need to say. They can say it until we both have said whatever we need to say, and then that depletes that. Then you don't have to carry it. You've said everything, and you know you've given him those seeds, right. to those foundational seeds. And people say all the time, oh, they not listening. They listening. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are things that people say to you as a girl, as a young girl, mm -hmm. that you still hear. You might not have thought you was listening, but you'd be like, ooh. I have, yeah, mama did situation say that. comes up. Yeah. yeah. You'd yeah. be like, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So I'm, I think I'm the worst thing. It. Yeah, listen, we gonna, honey. I'm working on the daily too. The, the Lord will help you. But I promise, my kids are my best ministry. They help me. They really do. They help me. They temper me. And one thing that I also learned was, I said, God, you know, what am I learning through my kids? And a lot of time, what I learn is that the oil it runs down. The way you're in obedience to God is the way the children will be in obedience to you. And then once you line up to the obedience of God, then you still got to wait because that residue, the things that you expose them to, the situations that you put them in, the things that they experience in your care, you got to wait till it kind of runs its course. For instance, for me, my son, I used to love, honey, who I used to love. Listen, I had, uh, my favorite was Plaz at the time. I had me a CD with 101 Plaz songs. And so I would put put the top down, honey. I'm goons in the in the bushes, honey. I'm all of, yeah. It was yeah. I'm having all of this. So he in the back seat. And he's enjoying his best life, and we singing and bopping. But then when God changed my life and He changed the 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 tone of my ear, then that music doesn't sound good to me no more. Well, Bishop still likes it because he because I introduced him to it. So I can't get mad. You know, all I can do is be like, Lord, help me, because I don't want to hear that. Boppity, boppity, boppity. Bishop, let's listen to something else. But you expose them to it. So some things, we mad at our kids, but we put them in that situation. Yeah. So we got to give ourselves a moment, give them a moment, and give it to God, each situation. Philippians 4 and 6 says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he's already done. This is the recipe. I call it, this is the scripture, Xanax scripture right here. This is Philippians 4 and 6. It's better than Xanax. Worry about nothing. Pray about everything. Literally, the problems come to develop your prayer life. Help me, God. The second thing that I learned with my kids, God, I trust you with them. You got to believe that God gave you that baby. And when God gave them to you, he's going to watch. He Listen, we are good, we good mamas, we good mama bird. But daddy, oh, he ain't going to let nothing run up mm-hmm. that he's not going to allow orchestrate. And when you start to get worried about your children, think about your own life. You may have had a, a rough childhood or you may not. But either way, you yeah. live. Yeah. You live. Yeah. And it built something. So, you I don't know, think I had like a rough childhood, mm-hmm. uh, like, you know, as far as like sleeping on floors mm-hmm. or anything mm-hmm. like that. But mm-hmm. I know, you know, there was things that happened to me in my yeah. childhood that, like you said, sticks with people. Mm-hmm. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Whether it was things said, whether mm-hmm. it was people yep. who were in my life, you know what I'm saying? Yep. So, yeah, definitely get that. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a good um, good way to just kind of sit back and think about it. You know, one thing that I do with my kids um, I always say, let's. We, I take them on what I call mama son dates. I'm daughter daughter mother dates, and we just sit down and we go to get ice cream or you know whatever whatever they want to do. And I try to turn my phone off, cut the world off, and just let them have. You always want to have that open space, and that's good. I love that your son was able to come and say whatever he needed to say because what that lets me know is y'all got open communication. Yes, that's what I'm. That's what I. That's why I laugh. I, I yeah. Mean, I don't know. This parenting thing is. Just, <laughs> This is the thing. This yeah. is this is the thing. Yeah. This is the anxiety. This yeah. is this is these are the moments. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's really it's parenting is it's controlling my anxiety for my child. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Controlling, you know, I have to teach him like you said, mm-hmm. it's what you teach him. Yeah. How you teach him. Yeah. Like and I think about that. I'm like, did I say that right? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> yes, well that's good. And see the thing that I learned too about how we respond. Okay, this is going to help you. The way you respond, you're teaching him how to respond. We have become drama kings and queens, and we're making children drama queens and kings. So when somebody calls and says, so-and-so, so-and-so, you be like, girl, you're teaching them to rile up this situation. <laughs> or if something falls on the ground, and you be like, why would you? You're, you're rallying them up. Yes. And then we call the kids, like, honey, we all got all this yes. because that's how we was raised. Yes. You know, people yes. yelled at us for every little thing. So you have to, you got to start what I call manually, moment by moment, changing it. I, this is the one tip I always tell my daughter. Don't panic, problem solve. Don't panic, problem solve. So she used to call me, she'd call me and go, oh my God, I locked my backpack in the locker. I forgot the combination. Oh, she 
just will go nuts. And I will, and I will stay calm. When you stay calm when they losing it, that that's. But if you ain't learn how to stay calm when they losing, then y'all everybody's yes. just nuts and we all crazy. <laughs> but so now that she's learned, don't panic, problem solve. She gonna call me one day from school. She's like, Mama, these kids are such drama kings. They just they just fall out over everything. I said, Have no act like that because you don't learn the little okay. the little skill. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's really big for us. Don't panic, no matter what the situation is. Because you getting all anxious, getting crazy, getting worried, even getting depressed. It's not going to change it. You know, it's not going to change it. And so the, the other thing that really helps me understand that it's going to be all right is that my life is in the hand of God. He been with me this far. Whether you yeah. like it or you don't, if he didn't like it, he know how to take my life. He know how to take my breath. Yes. Okay, so... I am where I am because God has been with me. No matter what nobody else says, God has been with me. And so when you think about it that way, okay, God, what am I supposed to learn in this moment? Let that start to calibrate you. When you get to those tension moments, take a deep breath. Give yourself 10 seconds before you respond. A deep, a deep breath, then 10 seconds so you can calibrate your thoughts. I'm not getting ready to panic because everything else that I panicked about before still worked out. So let me see, what am I supposed to learn or what am I supposed to do? Or maybe your help is right there in front of you, but if you panic, you're not going to see it, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I think that that's, that has been really good for me because, honey, I was, whew, I had bad anxiety attacks for years. And it's crazy. It, it got to the point where, literally, like I said, I would have to go to the emergency room and they would be like, damn, like, you're going to be okay. But when I learned how to calibrate my thoughts, get in control of my thoughts, not let my emotions or my situation control me. You can't control me. Listen, I, I'm in my body. I heard somebody say this the other day, and it blessed me so good. He said, your mind is the only thing that you need to be consistent. You might lose your job. You might lose your spouse. You might lose your your whatever. But at the end of the day, you, you got this got to be in one piece, okay? You need this. So in order to, to have this beautiful and good and in one piece, the same way we go to the beauty shop and we get make we do our little hair, we do our makeup, you got to go back in two weeks or a week or however your hair appointments work, you got to stay tuned up on your mind, mm -hmm. you know? And so we constantly, and then in the morning, you might your hairstyle might have been good, but you still got to touch up your edges, you got to tie it up at night. So the same way we maintain our outer beauty, we got to maintain our soul, we got to maintain our heart, we got to maintain our mind, we got to keep it in one piece, because if I lose my mind, what? It's all right. God can still bring it back. I'm the proof of that too. But we don't want to have to lose our mind if we don't have to due to circumstances, situations, and people. You can't control people, but you can control you. Right. You know, you can't control what the kids do, but you can control you. I say it all the time for my kids when they start going to the left and to the right. I'll be like, Lord, these your children. So whichever way you're going with it, I tell them, I'm going to be great. Mm -hmm. Whether you want to be great or not, it lives in you because you got my DNA. Mm -hmm. So... You got to know that about yourself. The same DNA you got, it's in him. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Good and bad. <laughs> so, so no matter what, you know. I'm trying to correct it already. I'm like, dude, it don't even make sense to do that. I, mean, oh. I did that, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. I have to look yeah. back and be like, I did that. I did that. That was on the list. Oh, yeah. Goodness. I know, girl. They be helping you. They help you. They help you. They be, be like, whew. My mouth was smart as a teenager. Who and Bishop, his mouth is smart. But this is what this is the Bible says. People love to say the Bible ain't real, baby. Every time I go in here and then I compare it to real life, it's because you got to read the plain version so you can understand. I be like, who is it? When they say you reap what you sow, I be like, Lord. Bishop's mouth. Whoo, Jesus. Ooh. I'm nervous. Oh, Lord. Don't be nervous. <laughs> You're making me nervous. Don't be nervous. But Don't be nervous. what I'm saying? Look, look. Don't be nervous. You, you still in one piece. You still, but, but you know, sometimes things, and this is the truth, sometimes things have to fall out of place mm -hmm. so that they can fall back, back, back in place. Together. So Absolutely. that's good. You got to unravel. So this is the week, these first couple of weeks, we're going to be unraveling some things, and okay. then we're going to bring it on back together. Okay. So that's how it works. Well, I'm here for it. Oh, Every so, week. so your homework scripture is Philippians 4 and 6. I write it down for you. That's okay. your scripture. Philippians 4 and 6. Worry about nothing. Pray about everything. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. So, well, we thank y'all for joining us today for the Makeover Ministry. 
And if you would like to sit in, if you would like to have a one-on-one, -on -one, we can do live, we can do virtual, um, we can do, you can come and sit in the office if you're in the Clarksville, Indiana area, the Louisville, Louisville, Kentucky area, and I will soon be serving the Cincinnati, Ohio area also. So if you're in that area, we would love to, uh, to get you together. So inbox me, and um, thank y'all for joining us today. I'm AJ, I'm Apostle Julia, and you have been on the Makeover Ministry.